Hello, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell International. Today's topic is stem cell therapy for kidney failure in South Africa. So what does the kidney do? Let's talk about that a little bit before we talk about the failure part. Um, it's very instrumental in removing waste products and excess fluid from the body. You drink more, you pee more. It removes drugs from the body. Uh, some drugs go through the kidney metabolism, others go through the liver. It balances the body's fluids. It releases hormones that regulate blood pressure. It produces an active form of vitamin D that promotes strong and healthy bones, and it controls the production of red blood cells. So what are the reasons that a kidney might fail over time? Healthy kidneys filter about 200 liters of blood per day. High blood pressure and diabetes are the two most common causes of kidney failure. 13% of all United States adults have CKD, chronic kidney disease. Uh, we'll look at the incidence in South Africa in a second. There are various medications that can lead to kidney failure, overusage of nonsteroidal anti-inflammatories, various antibiotics, antivirals, transplant medications, HIV medications, um, and possibly diuretics. There are some diseases like polycystic kidney disease, glomerulonephritis. It's not an overnight phenomenon. It's the end result of a gradual loss of kidney function. And most people have no symptoms until they have less than 20% kidney function. In actuality, you can keep your current kidneys if you have less than 10% kidney function. They can compensate and do the job. So over 10% of American adults, which is about 20 million, have chronic kidney disease. Out of those, about 600,000 are on dialysis, and out of those, about 100,000 are waiting for a transplant. There's only about 16,000 transplants done per year in the United States. Um, now, looking at South Africa, there's been two studies in the past which have estimated the population prevalence of CKD in South Africa. So one looked at school teachers and found that 6% had CKD, and another found CKD in 17% in a cohort in Cape Town. So neither of these are definitive. Let's just go with, you know, go in the middle at 10%. So considering South Africa has a population of 60 million people, that's about 6 million with uh, chronic kidney disease. So when you look at the five stages of CKD, let's start from the top. So mild glomerular filtration rate um, is over 90. So that's mild disease um, and you're not going to have any symptoms, you know, with that. With stage two, the glomerular filtration rate starts to drop down to 60 to 89. Once again, you're not going to have really any symptoms with that, most likely. Stage three, glomerular filtration rate drops even more to 30 to 59. And then you may start to have a little bit of symptoms. Um, severe, stage four, is glomerular filtration of 15 to 29. You might start getting high blood pressure, anemic, tired. Um, and then with stage five, that's pretty much complete failure when you have less than 15 GFR. Um, you're pretty much headed into dialysis or a transplant. So what are the symptoms? Well, they're going to vary tremendously between patients. You may start to get itching, muscle cramps. You might start feeling sick, throwing up, uh, losing your appetite, feeling very tired. and That can come from being anemic. Uh, swelling and back pain. <clears throat> back pain. It might be that you're peeing more or less than normal, trouble breathing and possibly sleeping. So the traditional treatments can be actually very helpful to a point, okay? Um, lifestyle, if those are, are uh, causing some of the issues. Smoking, it's a great idea to stop that. And I don't mean switching to vaping, I mean just stopping. Um, diet, if, if a patient is obese or they have type 2 diabetes, um, that's one of the biggest reasons people end up with kidney disease. Um, and then exercise, of course, to help modulate the blood sugars and keep the weight down. Um, controlling the blood pressure and glucose levels. Um, medications for bone protection, uh, swelling, anemia, cholesterol, and high blood pressure. So on, looking at the last frontier, you have dialysis on the left and then transplant on the right. So dial dialysis artificially removes waste products and extra fluid from your blood. It kind of does the job of the, the kidney uh, with a machine. Um, 
In the United States, 500,000 Americans are on dialysis um, at any one point in time, and it may be two times a week, it might be three times a week for usually around four hours you sit on the machine. There are some risks, you might get an infection, you could get a clot, um, you know, you have this catheter where the um, uh, dialysis uh, lead goes in for the IV, and it, it can be a problem. You're using it over and over and over again. It's very costly. It uh, doesn't matter what country you're in. Dialysis is, is expensive. The average lifespan of a patient on dialysis ranges between 5 and 10 years. You know, we've seen less. We've seen more. Um, now, let's talk about transplantation. Um, I'm just going to talk about the United States. 100,000 in the U.S. are on the list, 18,000 per year receive. It's an average of three and a half years of waiting time, um, and 13 people die every day waiting to get their transplant. Transplant patients do live longer than those on chronic dialysis. They do have to take immunosuppressive medications for life. Um, you know, even if it's a six-point match, you know, you still have to take these immunosuppressive medications. There are two types of transplants. One is from a living kidney donor, like a, you know, a brother or a relative or a, a six-point match or five-point match. Uh, those do better, 12 to 20-year lifespan, I mean, a kidney lifespan. And then from a dead uh, cadaver, it's going to be like 8 to 12 years. So not, not terrible. Uh, so let's look at the stem cell therapy options and what the research has shown. Um, in a recent paper out of Brazil, mesenchymal stem cell therapy and acute kidney injury, this looked at 13 studies for acute kidney injury. Cellular therapy with mesenchymal stem cells has benefits in preclinical studies, meaning animals, through anti-inflammation, anti-apoptosis, it prevents cell death. Oxidative anti-stress, anti-fibrosis, it prevents scar tissue and helps modulate the immune system and it helps promote new blood, blood flow into the kidney. It's very promising and it should be part of the treatment of AKI patients in combination with you know, the traditional approaches already available. So here's another study, um, MSC transplantation, a promising therapeutic strategy to manage the onset and progression of diabetic nephropathy. You know, kidney failure due to diabetes is rampant, not just in the U.S., but also in South Africa. You know, any country that we're in, we see it, you know, every day. Patients come in with kidney failure, and that's usually the reason, um, is the diabetes just isn't that well controlled over a long period of time. This study showed that mesenchymal stem cells are a promising therapeutic strategy to manage diabetes nephropathy onset and progression, not just because it's safe, but because the mesenchymal stem cells help to protect the kidney. They protect it from scarring. They protect it from cell death. They promote new renal cells to differentiate and help out. So it's very, very helpful. Um, now this one looks at exosomes, which are called extracellular vesicles. This is out of Mayo Clinic. Um, accumulating evidence indicates that mesenchymal stem cells release exosomes that deliver genes, microRNAs, and proteins to recipient cells, and they, they work via cell-to-cell -cell signaling. That's called paracrine actions. They exert their trophic, meaning growth, and repair effects by shuttling their cargo, which has the genes, the microRNA, the proteins, to the recipient cells, and they, you know, slow down any renal injury and they improve the recovery. Uh, one thing to note is that we use the combination. We use mesenchymal stem cells in combination with exosomes to give patients the best results with stem cell therapy. Uh, this study looked at umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cells with the exosomes again. Um, 40 patients, stage 3 and 4, it, this, the exosomes improved the glomerular filtration rate, improved creatinine and BUN. There were no significant adverse events. And the cord blood um, MSCs with the ex ex exosomes were very safe, and they ameliorated the inflammation and improved the overall kidney function. I mean, this is not news to us. We see this all the time in hundreds and hundreds of patients to date worldwide. Um, here's a systematic review and a meta-analysis. A meta-analysis is when they pull together various studies, pick out the best ones, and then combine the patients and statistically analyze the data. So this looked at animal studies, um, and the cell-based therapy improved all the outcome parameters and reduced CKD progression. It confirmed that cell-based therapies improve impaired renal function and morphology in animals. 
Uh, here's an update um, in stem cells and translational medicine. It's a great paper. This was out of USC, Southern California. Um, showed that administration of bone marrow derived mesenchymal stem cells um, were most effective in slowing the development and progression of CKD. There was reduced uh, BUN, improved glomerular sclerosis and interstitial fibrosis pathologies. Um, and what they did was they um, induced um, glomerular damage with uh, chemotherapy, um, and they showed that this treatment can improve um, the kidney function uh, dramatically. So in conclusion, you know, I just presented some studies. There's a lot of small studies. There's early clinical trials. There's, you know, a lot of preclinical data. And our experience shows that stem cell therapy for kidney failure is not only very safe, but it's typically very effective. Um, it's really one of the only treatments that can help um, kidney function improve uh, dramatically. Is it a cure? No. It, it, we call it a mitigation, uh, but it can help patients get improvements, uh, reduce the need for dialysis or prevent it. Um, it's just been very, very exciting. It appears that high stem cell numbers are necessary uh, for most almost every condition we deal with. Stem cell numbers are critical to making sure that patients get the best results. When we get patients from other clinics who have not succeeded, it's usually because they didn't get enough cells, okay? Uh, evaluation of studies shows that you don't need to inject into the renal vein, you can just inject IV. It's very safe and just as effective. I do wanna note that we don't use embryonic stem cells. Those are the ones that come from aborted fetuses those, uh, once you get past the ethical issues, they're just not safe. They can cause tumors. They can cause rejection. They're not ready for prime time at all. So we use umbilical cord tissue derived stem cells with mesenchymal stem cells and hematopoietic stem cells. Those are safe and effective, and that's what we've been doing. So in South Africa, we have two clinics. Um, one is in Johannesburg. The other is in Umschlanga, which is on the coast right next to Durban. Um, we offer the treatments in both. The process starts very straightforward with a free phone consultation. It's no obligation. It's confidential with one of our experienced doctors. We will assign you a patient concierge representative to assist you with all the setups for the consultation, the quotation, and the travel logistics, any questions that you might have, you know, getting you the answers. So when you look at the cells that we use, these are umbilical cord stem cell tissue from the United States. FDA regulated labs, pristine safety record. The FDA quality assurance standards are very, very rigorous. We go above and beyond. We use pure potent stem cells, growth factors, exosomes, cytokines, secretomes, micro and messenger RNA. Um, we also use uh, umbilical cord derived exosomes, as you saw from the studies. Um, they've been very effective in helping patients with renal protection as well as improvements in you know, GFR and, and kidney function. Not every patient is a candidate. Um, you do have to have a certain level of function with the GFR so that we can assure that the stem cells and exosomes are going to work, uh, but that's decided on a one case-by-case -case, you know, basis. We've been featured a lot over the last decade. We've done 21,000 plus procedures worldwide. We're in seven countries now with over 45 uh, centers of excellence. Um, we have over 20 customized protocols, um, and the outcomes, our patient satisfaction rate is over 85%. So visit us online today at r3stemcell.com slash south-africa. Um, that's our website dedicated to South Africa. Lots of information on there. And then call us to set up your free consultation at 272-130-0182. Thank you very much, and we look forward to hearing from you.